Good morning. morning. Welcome to God's house today as we gather here to worship him and to hear his word. Welcome to those that are worshiping from at home. I already received some messages from you that you're with us today, so so glad that you're able to also join us in hearing God's word today. We continue a short series of of readings and services, sermons uh, called Jesus Appears, Um, very closely connected to Christmas. Jesus came as our Savior, of course. Uh, to Epiphany, Jesus appeared as the Savior of the nations, as the wise men were, were brought by God to worship him. And today the emphasis is on Jesus appears as the light in the darkness. He has come to bring light to our darkness. May God bless us as we hear that word and as we sing it, as we pray about it this morning. The order of service that we'll be following today is printed out for you in the service program. Let's begin our worship with the opening hymn, number 381, also on page two, the people who in darkness walked. May God bless your worship. stand as you're able. We continue our service on the bottom of page two of the service program. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He has sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 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 Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now give our attention to the chosen readings from God's Word for today. And we'll begin today with what is actually the second reading, the reading from one of the letters of the New Testament. And this reading and all the readings speak today about our Savior Jesus as the one who is the light of the world, the one who brings light into our darkness, the one who came to bring light, forgiveness, God's love, God's grace uh, to those who are in the darkness of, of sin, unbelief, despair, and everything else that goes with that. So you'll see that theme throughout uh, the readings today. And we hear about that in the first letter of John, chapter 2, beginning at verse 3, where we are encouraged to be found to walk in the light of Christ. And, and that walking in the light of Christ is shown as we live that light, uh, loving and caring for those around us. This is how we know that we have known him, if we keep his commands. The one who says, I know him, but does not keep his commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If anyone keeps God's word, the love of God is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we are in him. The one who says he remains in him should walk as Jesus walked. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command, but an old one that you have had since the beginning. The old command is the message you heard. At the same time, the command I am writing is new. 
It is true in Jesus and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is still in the darkness. The one who loves his brother remains in the light and nothing causes him to stumble. The one who hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 27. One of the phrases in Psalm 27 is, uh, the Lord is our light and our salvation. A beautiful psalm and a beautiful gospel message from God. The Lord is our light and our salvation. This morning we'll sing a song version of Psalm 27 called We Are Singing. It is on pages 6 and 7 of the service program.
Please stand as you are able for today's gospel reading and acclamation. First, the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those who in the land of the deep darkness, the light has gone. Alleluia. Today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Jesus begins his preaching ministry with the message, the kingdom of God is near. And he begins his ministry with honoring his people with his presence in the area of Galilee, fulfilling what God had promised through the prophet Isaiah. When Jesus heard that John was put in prison, he withdrew into Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. He did this to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, along the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And on those dwelling in the region, and the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, repent because the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea since they were fishermen. He said to them, come, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending mending their nets. Jesus called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the next hymn, O Christ, our true and only light.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God's word for our reading and application of faith and life today with the message is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 through chapter 9, verse 4. Uh, some words that were quoted in the gospel reading today about where Jesus was doing his ministry, his preaching and teaching in the land of Galilee, and why God had him do it there, beginning there, and what Jesus was bringing to his people and to us today. Light, light in the darkness, shining in our darkness for our salvation. Before we read that, a little bit of a background to the area of Galilee, the northern part of the land of Israel at that time, and, and still today, I guess it's referred to as that. But that northern part uh, was the tribal lands that were given to Zebulun and Naphtali, two of Jacob's uh, sons and their descendants. When the Israelites first came out of Egypt, out of slavery, and then uh, came into the promised land, 40 years later, uh, all the tribes were appointed tribal lands. And uh, the northernmost part was given to Zebulun and Naphtali and their descendants. Well, their descendants, not to them directly. And that was the area that bore the brunt of all the battles, all the wars, all the armies that came through to, to uh, wipe out, to, to defeat, to loot, to terrorize, to do all these things to the people of Israel, to God's people. The Syrian armies, the Syrian armies, the Babylonian armies all came through the, that northern land. Uh, they came across the, the eastern desert. They came to that northern land, and so those lands and those people were the ones that always, always got run over by the invading armies. Imagine that, that happening regularly. Not just once in a generation, but multiple times in a generation that that happened. How hard it is to live a life with that constantly happening. Sometimes when you see that kind of thing happening to peoples and, and groups and areas and uh, nations in our world, our, our hearts should just go out in, in care and concern for those that suffer uh, war and battle and armies uh, all the time. So that was the life of the people of Zebulun and Naphtali, the area that then was called Galilee. And over that time, it had become really a, a quite a mixed area, mixed ethnicities, including you know, Jews and, and Gentiles, Israelites and Gentiles. And so it was sometimes called to called the Galilee of the Gentiles. So it was those people that maybe might have thought of themselves as the ones least liked by God, least loved by him, the tribes that were, were least important because they kept on losing everything, their land, their crops, their, their homes, their lives. And so probably for those people, life, yeah, there was much darkness, the darkness of war. And of course, when neighboring people brought idolatrous worship, uh, the people took part in it, and, uh, and that brought even more darkness, spiritual darkness. And then the darkness of despair that, well, God hasn't helped us. We're looking to these other mediums and spiritists and these other false gods that really didn't exist at all and in order to try to get some help, and that's not helping either. It's only sinking us into deeper darkness, and so certainly... We can't call on God now. In fact, after generations of that, hundreds of years of that, many of the people didn't even know that the true God to call upon, the one who is their light and salvation to, to look to. So yes, it was a, a land of darkness, physical, spiritual, financial, economical, um, and every other way also. So how much of a blessing it was for those people then to be the ones that God chose to first send the chosen one, the Messiah, the Savior, God's Son, sending him to them first, to be the first ones to hear 
his preaching, his teaching. The good news that there's forgiveness, life, and salvation from God, and he will carry it out through, through me, Jesus would say to them. The kingdom of God is near, as, as it says he preached, and here I am to make you a part of it by my preaching, through my preaching, but through my words and actions, through my sacrifice. And in a way, Jesus might have said, well, we'll get to that eventually, as he preached and taught them. But three years later, that would be carried out. So what an honor it was for those people that were in the deepest of darkness. What a description and a display of God's grace and mercy to to do things that way to choose that land, that, those people, to be the first ones to hear God the Son preach the good news of forgiveness and salvation. So God had spoken about this through the prophet Isaiah, as Matthew mentions. Matthew mentions uh, the prophets a lot in his, reading, in his writings, as you'll, you'll notice. And he spoke about that in Isaiah chapter 8, beginning at verse 19 where it says, when they tell you, consult the mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, shouldn't the people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony. If people do not speak according to this word, there will be no dawn for them. They will pass through the land, distressed and starving, But when this takes place and they are starving, they will be frustrated and they will curse their king and their God. They will turn their faces upward and then they will look down to the ground. But I tell you, they will see only distress, darkness, and the gloom that brings anguish. They will be banished into thick darkness. So first of all, looking at that section... What a darkness the people were in that Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus uh, came on the earth. uh, What a darkness they were in and would be in. Yeah, and and spiritual people would say, consult the mediums and the spiritists. Listen to all these voices. It's interesting that the word, uh, those who whisper and mutter, the, the Hebrew word there was actually those who twitter about, um, uh, twittering, you know, back and forth, all these voices, but really having no... Nothing to say, nothing important to say, nothing that can bring light to their darkness. I don't think that's a prophecy of of today, by the way. (laughs) But interesting that that's what human beings in their sinful darkness, that's all they can do. Talk and talk and talk about things that have no light, things that have no real answer because they're not from God. They're only from the the ideas and delusions of of human minds. And so the prophet said, shouldn't the people consult their God? Um, To the law and to the testimony, a way of saying, look to God's word. Look to God and his word. Maybe a lot of parallels today uh, beyond the the Twitter thing, but a lot of parallels to today, to our, our life, our culture, our society. A lot of spiritual darkness, immorality, immorality called good, darkness called light and, or enlightenment, and what is light, what is right, what is moral, called evil and called hateful and called everything else. Yeah, a lot of darkness out there in our world still today. Just like in Isaiah's day, and in Jesus' day. But of course, as God sent Isaiah to preach to the people of his day, 700 years before Jesus, as God sent his own son Jesus to preach to the people at that time, 30-ish AD, um, it wasn't because of all the darkness out there that the rest of the world was experiencing. It's to bring light to the people, to you, to me, to the people listening to Isaiah, to the people listening to Jesus, those who also were experiencing darkness. 
we go along with the, the voices of our world, the, the immorality and things, we're, we're listening to those voices muttering about, whispering about, and, and not listening to God. And so we try hard, we try hard. Well, let's not fill our minds with those things. Let's, let's look to God's word for, to see what is right. And over time, you know how that wears us down? Where is this down spiritually? Where is this down in commitment to God's word? You look back even, you know, a few decades or, uh, you know, a, a century, it seemed like much of our modern culture and society did look to God's word for what is right and wrong and based on what is right and wrong on it. And, and over time, it's like, ah, it's just too hard to keep on saying this is what the Bible says. We need, we should do this. This is what is best for us. And, and over time, we just start to, the gloom, the darkness starts to fill our hearts too, and we just go along. Um, may God strengthen us and help us when we find ourselves, ah, it's easier just to go along. But also one more uh, point. The gloom that brings anguish, as it says. When we bring anguish on ourselves by our own wrongs, sinful attitudes, which is darkness by our own, um, trying to solve our, our spiritual problems on our own. I mean, it's the, the natural human tendency to say, well, I can, I just do a little better, work a little harder. I can, I can fix what is wrong with myself or what is wrong with my relationship with God. And and yes, we know that's we, you know not work righteousness. We don't want to do that. That's that's wrong. We put our faith and trust in God for forgiveness, life, and salvation. But it's there, and maybe the source of spiritual gloom in our lives today. Now, whether or not we're we're sensing that or aware of that, and we can only really look at our own hearts and minds and and see where that darkness or that gloom or that anguish is has as its source our own sinful condition. May we place ourselves with these people, putting ourselves in that same, same boat with them in spiritual darkness, um, whether it's maybe not as dark as the rest of the world, not as, not as full of anguish or gloom, but even if it's just a little bit, recognizing that that little bit of darkness is also darkness and separation from God, that we too, we all, Need some light. Need some light at the end of the tunnel. Need some light in the tunnel. Need some light in our hearts and minds. Need some, some of God's words. God's words of forgiveness. God's words of, I am with you always. God's words of, I've got you now and for eternity. And that, that light at the end of the tunnel, um, the eternal glory of, with God in heaven. God sent Jesus to uh, bring light to our darkness, to shine in our darkness. And what an honor, what a blessing, as we read about God doing just that. Maybe in the reading for the people that least deserved it, the people that had been run over by all the armies and then took part in all that, that idolatry and adultery and immorality and everything else that came along with it. God, in his grace and mercy, honored them. Not because they deserved it, not because we deserve it, but honored them because that is what God does. That is how God acts in his grace and mercy. Wanting from eternity to, to seek and to save what is lost. And so, chapter 9, verse 1, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for the land that was in anguish. In former times, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time, he will cause it to be glorious along the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For those living in the land of the shadow of death, the light has dawned. God 
God honored them and assured them with his presence. They not deserving it, us, we not deserving it today, but God saw to it that his light of his word, his grace and mercy would dawn on them. And he has seen to it that it has dawned on you and me. Jesus, his word, his forgiveness, everything he did for us, and then sending the Spirit to, to guide us in response to that word, to live a life following God's word and will, loving God, loving our neighbor. So note that. God in love and mercy assures us with his presence, honors us with his presence. Verse 3, you have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you like the joy at harvest time, like the celebration when people divide the plunder. So if it's us today thinking about darkness, distress, gloom, gloom that brings anguish, all of that, and yeah, probably say, yeah, we see that every day, experience it every day. The answer to overcoming that is not, let's just work harder to, to turn the tide in our culture, but rather... God himself is the one who multiplies our joy, increases our joy, making it like people at the harvest time, seeing all the, the blessing that has come in after all the hard work, after all the, the harvest time and, and everything that goes with that, the joy at the end of that. That's you and me in our daily lives as God's people. Yeah, lives hard, gloom, dark. dark. Uh, anguish, darkness all around and inside. But now after all of that, because that has all been addressed, taken care of, beaten back, removed, or we have been removed from it and placed right at the end of the tunnel under God, God's light and grace. And so our lives are like harvest time. The hard work is done by Jesus for us, and we live in that joy. And then the third thing that, in the way Jesus brings light to our darkness, uh, verse 4, For you have shattered the yoke that burdened them. You have broken the bar on their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor, as you did in the day of Midian. A way of saying Jesus brings light by freeing us from what oppresses us the most. It's interesting, uh, Midian is mentioned. You, it, Isaiah might be referring to um, Gideon and uh, facing the Midianites. And if you remember that, uh, that situation, God had whittled down his army to a very small amount. And then um, at night, um, the Midianites were all gathered and camped, and and then um, uh, in the middle of the night, God brought confusion onto the Midianites, and and the army went in and and uh, easily defeated the Midianites, and there was great joy that this this evil, this oppressor, had been had been defeated. Maybe that's what's mentioned here uh, or pictured here, referenced here, but it's a picture of the greater act of removing the broken that broke breaking the bar that that um, that yokes us or burdens us that oppresses us and even more than an ancient army even more than armies today even more than in the moral society around us even more than the devil that's constantly attacking us by day and night even more than our own sinful hearts that ally than itself with every all of the sin around us. Jesus, by his life, by his sacrificial death on the cross, carried out that great act of freeing us from that oppressor. Sin, death, Satan, and everything connected to it. So, the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, the tunnel of gloom, has come. 
the oppression has been defeated and has been lifted. And so as we live our lives each day, and yeah, it doesn't really seem like that all the time. Where do we look? We don't look around and see, well, where is it we look? To the law and to the testimony, to God's word, where, where Jesus tells us over and over again, I am your light. I am your peace. I am the son that was given to save you. I am your sacrifice. I am your light and your salvation, as the psalm writer, Psalm 27 wrote. I hope and pray that this news of, of Jesus can bring joy to you and to me each day. Just like the joy it brought to the people when Jesus first started saying, the Savior is here, I am the Savior. The, day, the night of gloom is over. May every day as we wake up as God's people and, and live our lives and school and work and dealing with people around us and interacting, may it be a day that shines brightly like this. This morning the sun was shining brightly. And not, not that only that physical sun, but God's son, S-O-N, Jesus, that honors us each day with coming to us with his presence, assuring us that, that he is with us, gladdening us with his gifts of mercy, of peace, of love, of forgiveness, daily bread, and freeing us with his sacrifice. And because he has shined in our darkness, pushing out our darkness, he blesses us with shining that light to those around us. And all those out there, the world around us, that's what the world also needs. They need Jesus, and they need you and me, Jesus people, shining his light to them. May God bless us as we live that life each day. May it be to Jesus' glory, to the salvation and peace of many. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now, may God's peace, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us take this opportunity to shine the light of Christ, you could say, as we, we confess the truths of God's word. The Apostles' Creed is a summary of who God is and what he has done for our life and salvation. The Apostles' Creed begins on page 10 of the service program. We confess it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we will join in the prayer of the church for the season of Epiphany. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time, you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. You brought our light and light by those who are walking in darkness and the joy of salvation to those who do death. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Arouse us and our missionaries to flood the world with the light of your gospel. 
Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. We pray especially for Susan Weiler continuing to suffer from um, shoulder uh, 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 surgeries and, and recovery. And also, Linda Neef recovering from a broken arm. Give them your help and hope and bless them through their doctors and medical staff. And also, Lord, give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. Be gracious to all and lead us to a select life of our love in everything we say and do. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the light, the full light of your glory, and with all your saints and angels sing the everlasting song of triumph. Amen. Amen. And now let us thank and worship our God with our offerings. Let us now conclude our service with the closing prayers, blessing, and hymn on pages 12 and 13. Let us pray. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of faith of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We join to sing the closing hymn, Christ Be My Leader.